OLED gaming monitors aren't anything magically new nowadays. Perhaps a few years ago you would pull out your gaming notebook with an OLED panel and wow people around you, or boot up your gaming console or PC on an OLED monitor and be far superior than the rest. But the tech has found its way into mainstream gaming with users embracing smaller OLED TVs as their go-to gaming displays, and PC tech brands are even making their own large and small format OLED displays. Where the tech is expanding is how well these OLED panels perform. They all have the same incredible black levels and offer color unlike anything else on the market. However, the technical side of things such as refresh rates, latency and cooling is where the brands are trying to fine tune OLED panels to push them to the limits. The latest is the new Asus ROG Swift OLED PG27AQDM, that's a long name. A 1440p 240Hz OLED monitor aimed at the real enthusiasts. This monitor packs the popular display size of 26.5 inches and of course a OLED panel. When you list the features, this monitor has them all. It includes 800 lits of HDR brightness, 10-bit color depth and HDR10. It is also G-Sync and FreeSync compatible, has an infinite contrast ratio and all the ports needed to take full advantage of the 1440p 240Hz support. You will need to fork out quite a lot of money to own this monitor. Asus is asking 35,000 Rand for it. But the price does align with other OLED monitors from brands such as LG and Alienware. However, it is a tough pill to swallow, especially considering there's a larger 4K version expected to launch in early 2024. Right now, I want to share my experience with this monitor. So let's dive into the greats and the not so greats on offer. When you get the ASUS ROG Swift OLED PG27AQDM, I'm not going to say that every time, it takes a few minutes to set up. You'll need to take the display portion, attach it to the back arm and screw on the stand. It is simple and hassle free. The 27 inch size also means you can pretty much do this alone. The monitor itself is definitely an ROG product and the unit has been designed to look like some sort of spaceship looking thing from a distant galaxy. The stand itself is fairly wide in the front, if anything a little bit too wide for my liking. There are some cool LED effects around the stand too and an underglow logo which shines down onto the table. Of course this can be turned on and off if you're not interested in it. The monitor itself houses all the tech but everything is crammed into one section behind the display. This compartment packs some pixel-like RGB on the one side with an ROG logo. All the ports can be found underneath and there's some cool ROG graphics splashed around the frame. When it comes to the ports, the monitor includes a DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0 ports, one 3.5mm audio out, two USB 2 ports and one USB-B upstream port. There's no USB-C which is kind of a bummer here. Considering the price of this monitor and how advanced it is, I would expect it to include one. Outside of that, the rest is an ultra-thin metal which extends the display outwards. This is nothing really new when it comes to OLEDs. Most TVs and monitors have almost no depth to them and all the components are hidden in a smaller compartment. It really is the joy of owning an OLED. The tech barely needs anything behind it in order to work. The back arm also acts as a great place for cable management. Everything gets fed through the middle arch and it lays flat so the monitor slider doesn't touch the cables. There's also a light up Swift logo on this portion of the arm. Right behind the ROG logo on the panel itself is where the controls are found. This joystick is used to control the functions of the monitor which leads to my next topic, the performance. Right off the bat, the monitor comes loaded with a range of gamer centric features that you'll either use or won't use. Black stabilizer helps increase the brightness of dark areas so you can see what's lurking in the dark. There's also a range of color calibration settings, different temperature toggles and even presets to make it easier for you. One thing I was very interested to test out was the display's uniform brightness. If you don't know, OLED displays tend to dim down the overall brightness when the image display is too bright. This is called Auto Brightness Limiter, or ABL. This is especially noticeable when you have a plain white 100% window on the screen. Sometimes displays drop by at least 40% brightness to prevent overheating and burning. Testing this monitor, there was definitely a noticeable drop in brightness, but I was surprised to see how limited it was. I would say there was only a 4-5% drop. It's pretty impressive for an OLED display. 
I was also impressed to see an HDR brightness toggle on the display too. It let me actually toggle the brightness of the panel when in HDR mode. Most HDR monitors lock this down as they rely on the output metadata to determine how bright the panel gets. Speaking of brightness, I measured only 241 nits of SDR brightness in a real scene test. This was the max I hit when playing games. In HDR, this was 723 nits. Of course, this might change for you depending on your settings. In a 10% window, I measured HDR brightness of 610 nits. This means that only if 10% of the screen was lit up, the highlights would peak at that brightness. It doesn't really portray what you'll see in games. But you can rest assured that the panel is bright and it does its job. When the scenes do get too bright however, I could definitely notice the APL at work and it is hard to ignore the dropping brightness to compensate for the image. Another thing I want to touch on is the subpixel layout. Due to the nature of the OLED panel, text across various situations on the display did fringe. This means if you're in text documents and other font heavy programs, expect to see some color fringing around your text. It isn't the end of the world but text isn't as clear as you would find it on LCD panels. This is mainly due to the way pixels are laid out on the panel and the spacing between the text and the pixels turning off and on. Apart from that, the general picture quality on this monitor is great. I was impressed by the lack of reflections on the display too. It's so weird to have an OLED panel without the super glossy finish. The panel also checks all the boxes across color gamut with 100% sRGB and 97% DCI-P3 coverage. It is incredibly accurate right out of the box. The OSD is also quite feature packed with loads of calibration tools to tweak. You can also enable the FPS counter, turn on a crosshair, tweak the RGB settings and more. There are 9 picture modes to toggle between two, each themed after a specific gaming genre or viewing style. There's also a lot of room to tweak your color gamut and color temperature. If anything, this monitor packs a robust list of settings and I was surprised to see just how much freedom ASUS has given consumers here. Those worried about OLED burn can also make use of the screen protection features. There's an adjust logo brightness and a pixel cleaning reminder which you can run at certain durations after using the display for a number of hours. The cleaner takes 6 minutes to run and you'll have to do it quite often the more you use the display. So what about gaming? While everything I've set up to this point, you can pretty much gather it was great. The panel's calibration and the greatness of OLED deliver a superb gaming experience here. It all looked phenomenal and the advanced internal tech provides a solid experience. Input lag was as low as 2.5 milliseconds and with VRR, that increased only to 3 milliseconds. I did experience a much higher input lag of 33 milliseconds during 60Hz gaming, which is something to keep in mind. While the display doesn't boast HDMI 2.1, it does fully support both the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S through 1440p 120Hz. It also comes with VRR and HDR thanks to this. Of course this isn't a 4K monitor so there's no 4K 120Hz support here. You'll also need to be playing 240Hz games or being able to run 240Hz games to fully take advantage of the OLED panel's refresh rate. But even at 60Hz and 120Hz, things look really great. It is also thanks to the display's fast pixel response time which Acer says is only 0.03. This means that pixels can change color incredibly fast which reduces blur and makes everything look clearer. Even moving objects are highly detailed. From a technical point of view, this monitor is one of the best displays you can get, but I still kind of feel robbed here. The overall HDR brightness isn't that great which means the so called custom cooling system is still not up to standard to pump out the brightness seen on other display tech. Don't get me wrong, OLED is fantastic, but brightness limitations are still a tough pull to swallow and this display definitely has brightness limitations. Then there's no USB-C, which would have been the cherry on top really. If you're paying this price for this monitor, it should be here, that's all I'm saying. Of course the elephant in the room here is also the new model which is expected to launch in early 2024. The 4K 240Hz model aims to increase the brightness seen on this display thanks to its graphene film. With that we'll see even brighter scenes at 4K 240Hz. It kind of makes splurging 35,000 Rand a little difficult knowing there's a better model on its way. Sure it will likely cost more but it's still a factor to consider when you're investing this much money. But for what it is, the ASUS ROG Swift PG27AQDM OLED monitor is pretty darn impressive and it sits alongside other great OLED displays on the market. There's no real standout feature that makes this a must buy above others though. And if you're not bothered with 240Hz gaming, you can always look at a much, much, much cheaper 43 inch LG OLED with 120Hz support. Of course, this specific monitor has been made for those who want the best and demand the highest possible refresh rates, of which this monitor doesn't disappoint.
So those are my thoughts on this OLED monitor. Huge thanks to Asus for sending this through for me to test out. I really did have a great time with it. As usual, thanks for stopping by and giving this a watch. Please do consider liking and subscribing for more future content. Also visit www.glitch.online for more gaming tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell. Thank you.